on uh, April 30th, um, a good friend of mine and uh, a good friend of many a Newfoundlander by the name of Ron Hines was uh, posthumously being inducted into the Canadian Songwriters Hall of Fame. Um, this is a huge honour that um, I, I, I wish he'd been around for and um, I'm sure he is in ways. Um, but that was supposed to happen tomorrow night at the ECMAs. Uh, the ECMA is the East Coast Music Awards uh, or East Coast Music Association and they have an awards once a year and uh, they do great stuff out there. The ECMAs are fantastic and the rewards um, conference and awards show is a great thing. I've been lucky enough to be a part of it. Um, I played with, uh, with Lenny Gallant and a bunch of people when uh, Ron passed, the Anna sisters and stuff. Um, we did a Ron tribute uh, at the big uh, thing out in Sackville. It was amazing. Uh, a bunch of Newfoundlanders up for that too. Um, that was a real, uh, <laughs> a real, real band of characters. And it was a lot of fun, and I was, I was pleased as punch to be a part of it. Uh, but tomorrow night, uh, this party will not be happening. Uh, it was supposed to happen in Newfoundland this year too. I think there was some stuff planned at the ship and um, at the Black Sheep, uh, and a few other venues as well. And it's really sad that it ain't happening. Um, but there's a lot in the world that's not happening, and we don't need to get into all that. Um, so tonight, being a special night, I'm going to play all the songs from this. This is a record that I made called A Good Dog Is Lost, a collection of Ron Hines songs, and something that I haven't told anybody, well, I mean, I haven't sort of said publicly, this shot was the very first day that I, um, the very first show that I went out to do with Ron, um, me and Ron and Boomer were uh, driving, I, I can't remember where we were playing, it might have been Marystown. And uh, we were driving out, and I was sitting in the back of this uh, minivan that we had rented. And Ron had his hat on the dash, and Boomer was driving, and the lighting was perfect. We had all these birch trees, and, the, and there was no reflection in the mirror. And I just took my phone, and I went, click, this is a memory. And sure enough, um, that's the cover of the album. Ron's hat, Boomer driving. Um, Ron and Boomer, uh, Paul Stamp, uh, or for those of you who know him as Boomer, uh, Boomer was out with me when I... Um, when I first uh, went out with Ron and he taught me the ropes of being with Ron, that's the best way to put it, because uh, me and Ron spent a lot of time together, just the two of us, and Boomer had to bring me up to speed on a whole bunch of things. And uh, wow, what a trip it was. Anyways, uh, I'm going to start this night with a song. I'm going to play the album in sequence, so I'll talk about the songs along the way. We might be in for a long haul. Also, share your Ron stories. Share your Ron stories. Uh, type a little something in. Tell us about Ron. Send us a picture. One of those goofy smiles that he always had on. He was so good whenever you, you went to get a picture with him. He had a beautiful smile. And uh, send us your pictures, and uh, let's have a little Ron fest here tonight. Um, back at the turn of the century, Newfoundlanders went down to New York uh, as steel workers and concrete pourers. And um, they built a lot of the New York uh, skyline as we know it. Um, and... Um, this is a little piece of memory that uh, Ron put together. I never, I never heard him do it with any instrumentation. It, he did it as an a cappella piece uh, called For the USA, which led into Here Come the Yanks um, off of um, Stealing Genius. But I did find him uh, doing this when he first wrote it uh, in one of those little tents um, at the folk uh, festival. He was in a little tent doing a seminar. And he, was, he played the song that he was working on, and he used uh, these three chords. So I just kind of grabbed it from him. Well, it's 20th century, still in bloom, in fair conception bay. Oh, the world turned round and men were bound, all for the USA. All for the USA. Onto the streets of a New York town, they poured like morning tides to raise the concrete and the steel up to the New York sky. Up to the New York sky Can you read and write? Can you drink and fight? Can you take the night so long? You can make a life for a child and a wife While far away from home While far away from home You can tip your hat to a Chelsea girl She'll free you from the cold She'll lend a tender, loving ear to every story told, to every story told. There's them who freeze and them who fold and crawl home in dismay and curse the hand of God above. They'll break right down and pray. They'll break right. 
thinking, uh, you know, everybody should have a drink or a sip of your tea or whatever you got going on. I'm going to light a candle here for, for the man. Keep this going while I'm thinking about him for the next little while. little warm tobacco pipe flavored candle. I'll lay that there and try not to burn the house down. My dad was a fireman. I'm pretty scared of fire. Uh, my dad liked to drink too, and uh, I'm drinking a long tooth lager tonight, not a pale ale, it's a long tooth lager. Thank you to Lucas for uh, bringing these to my porch and accepting my e-transfers. It's a wonderful delivery service you have. Maybe it's not public that you have a delivery service. I shouldn't be mentioning that. Hypothetically, if Lucas was to drop these off on my doorstep and I was to e-transfer money, that's fantastic. What song two on this fine disc? Some great musicians on this album as well. Uh, this song, this is the first song that I played with Ron. I flew down to Newfoundland not knowing what to expect. Uh, Ron wouldn't give me, Ron and his manager Charles McPhail would give me no information about the tour that I'd been hired to do. And Ron was a, I mean I grew up in Newfoundland, Ron Hines, you know I saw him on TV when I was a kid. He inspired me to play music, he inspired me to do what I am doing to this day. Um, and then I met him as a teenager when I was living on Queens Road um, on and off when I was uh, with a girl named Paula Nolan and Mercedes and Phil. Um, Mercedes was Paula's mom and, and Phil uh, had a place on Queens Road and I used to see Ron down there and, and we became acquaintances. And then we crossed paths over the years but he was always an inspiration. And then uh, I got a call um, one, uh, one day. I was uh, having Thanksgiving dinner out of my sister Paula's and I got a text from Ron Hines asking me to come down to Newfoundland to do a bunch of shows at the Arts and Culture Centers across Newfoundland and Labrador. And um, I was very excited, um, but I couldn't get any more information. This, aside from the fact that this was his return to the stage after his big battle with cancer um, and um, he was still in recovery, that was really all the information I could get. And uh, Turns out we did the whole show, the whole tour as a duo, aside from the St. John show, um, which we had uh, Boomer and Sandy, um, no, Boomer and Paul, uh, was Sandy there? Sandy wasn't there, just Boomer and Paul. And um, it was a really interesting thing. Um, and he was aloof and elusive right up to the minute we walked on stage. We were in the dressing room just before, I should have my black book to show you. Uh, we were in the dressing room just before the uh, show when he came in, he said, what do you know, Kenny? And I said, uh, he called me Kenny, which really bothered me, and he knew that, so uh, he'd only do it all the time. Um, so I showed him the book. I said, here's what I got charted, man. And he, he kind of laughed, and he said, oh, my God. He said, you've got like 130 songs here. I said, yeah, it's, it's all your stuff. He said, uh, is it in the real keys? And I said, yeah, it's in the keys you recorded in. He said, oh, he said, and the arrangements are all the same. I said, man, I got everything here. Just tell me what we're playing. And he said, well, he said, I don't do anything like that anymore. He said, the keys are different every night. The feels are different. The arrangements are different. He said, you're just going to have to figure that out. And I went, okay. And I was really nervous. I mean, this guy was my idol. And um, we um, got to the side of the stage. He told me he was going to start with House, so I had a House ready in my little book. House in D, off of the Steel Ingenious album. And um, we walked out, and the crowd stood up, and they were teary-eyed. Ron's return, it was really a really magical moment. I was nervous as all get out. I sat down two feet over, three feet back from him, as he had instructed me to do because I was too tall to stand on stage next to him. And um, he looked back at me and he said, House and D, you know, and yeah. And he turned to the audience and he said, Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And he started playing a song called 1962. And uh, in the key of C, <laughs> Uh, which was uh, not the song as I was expecting, and when I realized what song he was playing, kind of found my chart for it, it was in a different key too, so... Um, 
he messed with me. He messed with me hard, and he made me a much better musician. And he taught me so much. And I miss him a lot. And um, it was the first song I ever played. I dreamed it was 1962. I dropped a quarter in the jukebox, and I played a song for you. I kissed you by the pinball king. We were listening to Del Shannon sing. I had all his records. He was my favorite then. And that's all gone. It won't come back again. That's all gone. And I put on my father's shoes Well, I stood out on the front porch Like he used to do I Stepped across the morning sands The skylight only showed a sign of rain Mine would be the only footprints I remained That's all gone It's all gone, it won't come back again. There was something I meant to say. Too many words got in the way. And I dreamed that it was 1962. I lit a fire. Sing songs until the rains would come. Straight across the fields we would run. You wrapped your sweater around my first guitar. I walked you home. And that's all gone. It won't come back again. That's all gone. Too many words got in the way yeah. And I dreamed that it was 1962 I dropped a quarter in the jukebox And I played a song for you I kissed you by the pinball king You were listening to Del Shannon sing I had all my favorite then well, him and Brian Wilson that's all gone it won't come back again that's all gone and it won't come back again hey 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 1962, oh man, that song uh, conjures up so many, so many memories for me, um, oh, so many good images in that song, that one gets me, oh, we're going to do something special now, so look, we usually put something like this at the end of the set if I have my girls available, but they're both here tonight, and uh, it's, it's third on the album, so we've got to do it third in the evening, that's just, that's just the way it goes when you're playing sequentially. So uh, I'm going to get my girls to come over. we got some people on board there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, excellent. I'm going to get my girls to come over. We'll probably move this candle onto my amplifier. We'll move Ron over there. Keep them alive. Mm -hmm. There you go, buddy. You can sit here next to me right here, Cassie. How's that? Perfect. And, um... How are you doing tonight, Cassidy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fine. How are you doing? I'm great. Yeah, you finished your classes? Yeah. For now? Yeah. You're going to do some summer classes though, right? Yeah. Down at where? Online. You can't go anywhere. Yeah, but what, uh, nine old dad, what school? You're doing that, uh, is it Yale? No, Harvard. Harvard. You're going to do some Harvard classes. Well, they're free. They're free. Yeah. Harvard has free classes over the summer. Mm -hmm. And what classes are you going to do for fun? 
Um, I was thinking of biochemistry. Biochemistry for fun. That yeah. sounds like a fun thing to do does, on a, yeah. for the summer. Yeah. Wow. And you heard from your bosses <laughs> that work might be starting again soon, right? I mean, they're still they're like, in the work. You know. Okay, well, we've got some time. Mm-hmm. Hang out and play some piano and some guitar and yeah. you know, do all that. I'm so lucky to get to uh, play this song with my kids and to share a little bit of uh, Newfoundland culture with them. They didn't have the, um, the pleasure of growing up in Newfoundland. Um, they grew up in Campbellford, which is equally excellent, just completely different. Uh, but we've been playing this song for a long time. And it's always nice. The sun lives on a farm in a wide open space. You can kick off your shoes, you can give up the race. You can lay down your head by a sweet river bed and sunny. You're in front of the camera. Good lord. Phew. That's, that's what cats are good for. There's a second camera for the cutting stuff after. Get away, cat. Anyways, we stopped here at the house and, he, and Ron crashed on the couch and the kids came down for breakfast the next morning. I was up getting them some cereal or something. I, think, I can't remember which one of them was walked into the kitchen and said, there's an old man on the couch. 
<laughs> yeah, that's Ron. They went, oh. Ron, when he slept, um, he was really skinny at the end, and uh, you put a blanket over him, and uh, boy, oh boy, it was an interesting sight to see. He, uh, there, he was such a small man there uh, when he was fighting at the end. Um, still beautiful words and, and strong words and strong lyrics, but uh, his body wasn't, uh, wasn't treating him like it used to, but the girls got to, got to uh, know him, except him. he didn't scare him too much. Anyways, thank you very much, girls. Appreciate it. You can bring Ron back over here, Cass. What's next on this uh, little thing that we got going on here tonight? Hmm. I think I'm going to switch guitars just to... Ron was a fan of the J200s uh, and the J45s and the D18s and the, he, he was a fan of them all. Um, but it's uh, nice to move it around a bit. Uh, when I made this record, there was a few songs that had to be on it, uh, just because if you're going to do a Ron Hines record, there's certain songs you need to do. Um, and then there was certain songs that I wanted to do for personal reasons. And then there was a few songs that I just wanted to do because they were so damn interesting. Um, and this one is a particularly hard one to do solo, just because there's a lot to it and there's also a lot of empty space. Um, I played it with Ron once uh, live. With a band, it's a lot of fun to do. Uh, it's got that full sort of uh, sound and stuff and it's a, it's a nice support for the story. <clears throat> On Steel and Genius, Ron wrote um, 11 songs or 10 songs, I can't remember now, uh, based on favorite books by favorite authors, hence the title Steel, Steel and Genius. And the, um, the myth, fairy tale, fairy story, whatever you want to call it, back home, um, one of the uh, wives' tales is that uh, when a fisherman dies at sea, he gets to come home and visit his uh, family on the night of his death. And I heard countless stories growing up of um, uncles and grandparents and fathers and brothers being seen in the yard or, you know, through the window when they should have been at sea and the family would find out shortly thereafter that um, the person had perished at sea. And uh, I'm not sure the story that Ron took this one from, maybe if somebody out there knows they could post it. Um, and uh, again, keep posting your Ron stories, but I love this one for the lyrics. And um, when he gets into, uh, I think verse four and five, some of the imagery, I don't know if he took it directly from somebody else's pen or not, but uh, the, Im the imagery is just beautiful. I remember the first time I heard this song, just thinking, that's some great stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you just tuning in, I'm playing all Ron Hines tonight, uh, Newfoundland singer, songwriter. Uh, if you haven't heard of him, please go check his stuff out. Um, he is uh, fantastic. There's a song called My Father's Ghost, it goes like this. He was sitting on the stairway My heart filled up with dread His hands were clenched, his clothes were drenched I knew that he was dead And I turned away a moment When I looked back he was gone Then I went and awoke my mother Said, Mother, something's wrong. Something's wrong. He was here for a moment. Those were the words she spoke. Well, I thought that I was dreaming, but it was an hour ago I woke, and I swear I. I swear, my dear, he's lost his way. His ship has run aground. It's run aground. Well, the dawn is fairly breaking. 
She headed down the path Where the waters crashed across the rocks With all its rage and wrath But her heart had gone to ashes And the ice chewed through her bones Then her footsteps fell like granite As she came back home She turned towards the cold She took down the blessed crucifix And she burned it in the stove And we all stood in the kitchen Like travelers in the rain Waiting on some distant platform To board some lonely And sweaters to the forest far away. There's a monthly old age pension, and it keeps the wolf at bay. And I can't. It's quietly there in a rocking chair So he won't disturb my rest And when I wake with morning light He's gonna see my smoke Go downstairs and light the stove And mops all water from the floor And mops all water from the floor My father's ghost. I just love that whole um, when that verse picks up with the um, the dawn was fairly breaking as she headed down the path where the waters crashed across the rocks with all its rage and wrath, and her footsteps fell like granite. Um, no, uh, with all her rage and wrath. Uh, oh, such good stuff. Get these little buggers back in tune here. This next song I'm going to play is, uh, okay, this is the title track for the album. Uh, one thing that I, I should mention is that I, um, I made a Ron Hines record. I took 11 of his songs and I recorded them with my own voice and my own band and some of his band, um, uh, Paul Kinsman, uh, Sandy Morris were on it. And um, it was a fantastic experience for me and I want to thank the family for allowing me to do it as well. Um, they've been very supportive every step of the way. Um, Ron's friends back home, uh, everybody from John Coop right on through to uh, other Ron fans have um, supported this completely. And it's been a, a, a fantastic thing because in honesty, I was scared to death. I almost didn't make this record about three times when I was making it because this work is, uh, you know, the, the, the music of Ron Hines was pretty precious and um, it, was, it wasn't easy to make. Um, but the one thing that I, you know, I, I know I took his songs and I redid them and I reinterpreted them and I re-recorded them and I, I, now they exist as a piece of my existence as well. But the one thing I could never do was take Ron's stories. <clears throat> Ron was an amazing storyteller too. Um, and um, some would say that he was one of Canada's greatest storytellers. Um, and he told stories in songs, but he also told stories before songs. And I, I swore I would never take those. 
So, A Good Dog Is Lost, which is the title of the album, uh, is a song that Ron wrote when he um, saw something that his daughter Lily had done. Um, and there's a story that goes along with it which involves Kathy Jones and a missing dog and all this other stuff. And it is a fantastic story. Um, I'll find the link and put it on my Facebook page after. Um, it's called A Good Dog Is Lost. Um, and in brackets, it says, I think it says Kathy Jones' Lost Dog or something like that. And it's a, it's a live video from Ron where he introduces this song. And you really get a great impression of what Ron is like uh, as a storyteller in that particular story. Um, I can't do it justice. And as I swore to myself, I would never steal Ron's stories. Um, but I will play this song. And I saw some posts from Kathy today on Facebook and um, I hope she's doing all right and I hope maybe even she's watching. Um, There's a song called Good Dog is Lost. It goes like this. A good dog is lost Find above the counter at the corner store An address and a phone to call Still in all it said, a little bit more it said Hey there stranger, I can hardly believe Someone that I love that much has run away from me And if you find her, you can only Return to me at any cost For a good dog is lost Somewhere out there tonight on a dark in the street Running breathless with a wild beaten heart In all directions on four tiny feet calling Hey there stranger I can hardly believe If someone that I love that much about me Look at all these people Tucked away in their houses Watching reruns of Who's the Boss For a good dog is lost A tired clerk behind the counter says Every day in tiny ways we disappear On a night like this It's better him than me out there Good dog is lost. Sit aside beneath the windshield, wiper up my car. So I stashed it in my groceries. Caught this expression in my rearview mirror. It said, Hey there, stranger, I can hardly believe that a picture of a puppy drawn with a crayon can get to a guy. Never sleep, I'll just turn and toss For a good dog is lost A good dog is lost A good dog is lost Good dogs lost. I thought I thought I'd do some research today on a little bit of Ron catching up. I looked through the last messages that I have with him. The second last message that I got from Ron says, "Wait till you see my new Grit Laskin 12 string. You're gonna love it. Be in Toronto to pick it up in late November, around the 23rd, I think. If there's a way, if there was a gig that we could share, that'd be ultra cool. Ultra cool. <laughs> That's such a Ron thing." Got to be back for the ship on the 26th. They always had to be back to Newfoundland for a show on the ship. Oh, man. Miss that guy. Welcome to the Canadian Songwriters Hall of Fame, Ron. The godfather of Newfoundland culture. Uh, 
22, 22 ECMA awards he's been nominated for and won. 22, what a number. Good Lord. I think he was the only one out there. <laughs> he wasn't. What are we going to get into? We're going to get into a little house. There's another one of these raw tunes that just grew on me really early on. I think, not my house. I mean, I grew up in a, I grew up in a pretty middle class area. We had like a standard house. It, it didn't, it, you know, it didn't leak or anything. But we had cabins and, and we had a shack. We had a shack out on a railway track somewhere. I don't know where it was. Uh, my dad's not around, so I can't ask him. But we had a shack. It was out, used to take a drive down a dirt road, a couple hours outside of town, and you'd walk down a railway track for like somewhere between 30 minutes and six hours. I was a kid, I can't remember, it seemed like a long ways. And then uh, you'd show up at this shack and it was literally a tar shack, like inside in the bunks, it was like two by fours and exposed wood with nails coming in. And like, you know, that's what you were sleeping next to and fly traps. And I remember when it would, would rain in that place, it would be terrifying. The old Coleman lanterns were the only things that we had. And it was always the smell of smoke and booze and rain and just weirdness. Um, and the lines in this song about uh, this house leaks and heavy rains, moans and groans and hurricanes. I think it reminds me of that. It reminds me of the old shack out on the out on the pond. I can't remember where it was. Maybe one of my cousins. Maybe one of the tizzards is watching. It's Kitch's shack. Big Kitch. Kitchener, for those of you who don't know what a Kitch is. My uncle's name was Kitch. This is a song called House.
another lovely song about back home. These aren't like traditional Newfie songs, you know, like the jigs and reels. Ron, Ron did a lot of that stuff early on when he was working with Emil and stuff. There was, there was a lot of jigs and reels that came out. Um, as a singer-songwriter, he, he took a different thing, and it's, um, it's something that I've absolutely loved for so long. It makes me feel so comfortable. Um, he had a namesake signature song, um, The Man of a Thousand Songs, which was, um, uh, you know, a pretty big song for him, I think. Um, it was, uh, you okay with the cast? <laughs> And after Ron died, I was um, I was pretty destroyed after Ron died, as a lot of people were. I lost a friend, I lo lost a musical collaborator, I lost somebody that I played bass for, uh, and also somebody that I bounced new ideas for songs off of. Um, we had plans to do some writing together, which I was really excited about, and we never got around to doing it. Um, He'd become. He'd gotten to know my family. He was with me when you know my wife was diagnosed with MS, and uh, he was there at a time that was really hard for me. And um, he proved himself to be a man of many, many um, dimensions, uh, many layers. Um, you know, on the surface, he was the friendly guy that said hi to everybody on the street, and his counterpart, which was the the addiction-fighting, uh, angry um, man who could be very caustic. Um, but there was so much more to him than that, and I'm sure that the people that had the pleasure of, um, uh, of feeling any sort of love from Ron Hines um, know these levels. Uh, I just touched it myself just barely, but I know that there were people who have been working with him for a long, long time, years and years and years, friends and families, and uh, what, a, what a great person to have around. So after he died, I ran out to, on my next time in Edmonton, I went out and uh, thinking of um, this song that I'm going to play, Man of a Thousand Songs, I got this tattoo, which I don't know if you can quite see here. Um, the first opening lyrics in the song are, he's got a crimson red tattoo, he keeps it hidden just above his t-shirt sleeve. It's a broken heart and the inscription reads, no love songs, if you please. And uh, I thought that'd be a fitting tribute. And uh, I wear it proudly on my arm, and I've gotten lots of compliments over the years. John Squires did it, another Newfoundlander, out in, in uh, Edmonton. So I'm going to play this song for you tonight. Uh, it's a song called The Man of a Thousand Songs, uh, which I don't believe Ron played the same twice ever in my time playing with him, even though it's a real straight-ahead song used to get into that winking thing with me. He'd look back and wink and then change it. He's got a crimson red tattoo Keeps it hidden just above his t-shirt sleeve It's a broken heart and the inscription reads No love songs if you please But he don't really mean that it's his only cheeky tongue He stands up and sings for them every night He's the man of a thousand songs He knows the streets like he knows his last name He knows the city from the wrong side out He knows that time is cruel and that a man's a fool Who hides the truth behind his mouth He knows the Duke of Earl Don't dream your expectations, but 
But he's got the stands down to a T. He's got a friend in the backstage alley. Got just a thing to make the night move along. He's taking all requests like you might have guessed. He's the man a thousand songs. Oh, oh, he's a who we're talking about tonight. <clears throat> Cheers to Ron. I hope there's a few of uh, some of Ron's family said they might be tuning in. A few people who knew him well. I hope they're all there. I hope we're all having a nice time tonight remembering Ron. Please again share some stories, some photos. Any video snippets you got, time in to down below. There's, uh, there's people out there who are just getting familiar with Ron still. And uh, anything that we can do to keep his uh, music alive. I know it'll never die in the culture of Newfoundland, that's for sure. But uh, I, 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 love, I love it when somebody discovers his music and then they, uh, they reach out to me and they're like, Oh my God, how did I miss this? So, so many good pieces of, uh, of music. Um, I'm going to play uh, two songs tonight that are Ron collaborations. The first one was the um, uh, Good Dog is Lost. Uh, that's a co-write with Lily, his daughter. And, um, and the other one is a co-write with Mary McLaughlin, um, which has been covered by a bunch of people. It's a beautiful song. So um, it's a song called No Change in Me. And uh, it's one of my favorites. <clears throat> Kick off and die 
Watching people not look as they hurry by There's no change in the weather No change in me I don't want to leave But you can't live for free And you can't eat the air You can't drink the sea No change in me. I think that song resonates with me because I'm one of the Newfoundlanders who left, um, and it wasn't an easy thing to do. I mean, at, at 18, it was exciting to go to Toronto, or Toronto as we called it, and uh, you know, to sit on the plane with all the other Newfoundlanders and go, you know, C H R O N T O, that's where he wants to go, Toronto, Toronto. You know, we used to do that, and um, we all went away. It was it was just it was just what we did, and. Uh, when I heard that song, and uh, it just sort of it really hit home uh, as somebody who left. Uh, I still have a lot of attachments back home in Newfoundland. And it'll always be my home, um, but it's, um, it's weird not living there. Ron was, as some of you may know, a, um, a fan of um, westerns, outlaws, bandits, uh, that sort of that sort of cowboy uh, outlaw cowboy culture. Um, and he wrote a lot of songs about, um, about soldiers and heroes and cowboys and stuff like that. And there was a song that uh, my kids took a shine to uh, very early on, a song called Judgment. And um, when we were driving on our summer trips, they used to ask to play, you know, they used to say, play that Judgment tune. I have no idea why, um, but it was something they liked, so I played it. And it's one of those songs uh, that Ron borrowed from a story.
How's everybody doing out there? Are they having fun, people? Are people seem like they're having fun? Are they enjoying this, this moment of uh, Newfoundland nostalgia trip? I don't know if we have anybody out there from the original gang, the gang of PWC high schoolers that hung out with the gang of arts folks from the LSPU Hall back in the 80s sometimes. You know, there was me and Andrew and uh, Christine and all those crowd and we we were all in high school and we met up with the Newfoundland arts people and through, uh, through our drama teacher, Lois Brown. She was a very cool lady, still is very cool. She does amazing things. Um, very, very interesting. One of the most interesting people I've ever met, she is. Um, that was what brought this all together for me. I remember the ship in. I remember that old church bench in it with uh, Mercedes Barry and Phil Din and Jan Spence and Robbie Thomas and Graham and Mike Wade and Liz and oh, all these people and Ron and Connie and seems like we were there all the time and now nobody's there anymore not because the ship isn't cool but because everything's closed Tony Murray is uh, still booking and running the ship and it's a great place I play there every time I'm home it's fantastic love that spot lots of great memories I was walking in, uh, uh, what's that town down the States? Nashville. I was walking in Nashville. And I had my headphones on. I'm standing across from Robert's Western Wear, which is a great place because they have boots that you can buy on the wall, but it's also a bar and they have these great country bands playing, these amazing players. Uh, and it's a massive tourist spot. Like, I mean, on a Saturday night, it is jammed. Um, and if you go to the back of the room for like, two and a quarter dollars, you can get a PBR, which is a Pabst Blue Ribbon in a can, and a fried bologna sandwich. And when you've been out drinking all night, a fried bologna sandwich and a PBR is fantastic. Uh, Robert's Western Wear, but I'm standing outside Robert's Western Wear. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking, how can he do this? How can he get to the punch on all of it? How does he have so much energy? And the reason I'm thinking this is because my phone, which is now recording this, um, has headphones attached to it, which I'm listening to, and in it there's a song playing called The Boy From Old Perlican. And it's just the story of a Newfoundland singer going down to Nashville trying to make his way. And there I was, a Newfoundland singer in Nashville trying to get ahead. I was down for the Americana Conference. And uh, it just struck me as one of these things. 
And when I was putting the record together, I thought, well, I'd love to put that song on the record for that reason. And then I thought, no, that's not the reason I'd like to put that song on the record. This song is a special thing for me because Ron taught me, I mean, he didn't say, hey, Ken, this is what you got to do. But from being around him, I realized the importance of a smile. Um, growing up in the, in the sort of 80s and 90s rock and roll world, so much of smiling was like not cool. You know, you always wanted to look broodering and kind of murderous. And um, when I started working with Ron, every time I'd look at him on stage, he just had this massive smile and he'd pose for pictures with people with this big smile. And it was just, it was such a fantastic thing. And in this song, Boy From Old Perlican, the album version of this song is a live version. And if you listen to it, you can actually hear Ron smile before he delivers the cheeky line. Um, that line about, uh, you know, who he is. Um, but you can physically hear him smile, and it's amazing. And I've since gotten accustomed to smiling, and I, I attribute that to Ron. So uh, I keep looking at this flame thinking it's Ron. It's not. It's just a flame. Um, but for this time, it's representing Ron, so let's just leave it at that. It smells like warm pipe tobacco. Ron never smelled like that. Tennessee. 
From old Perlican, ladies and gentlemen. That is a nice song. That is a nice song. So, <clears throat> those of you not familiar with Ron's work, go check it out. There's some great live videos of him. There's some great, um, it's, it's a great piece of Newfoundland culture, a great piece of Newfoundland history. Uh, if you don't have this, you can grab it for anybody who still uses uh, artifacts like CDs. Um, but it is on Spotify and all that, so let that bring you in. And uh, all over my stuff, you'll find links to where to find Ron's stuff. Um, I uh, really miss that, man. We're going to finish the album. And then I have one little surprise left in store for you. Sorry for the folks in Newfoundland. I know it's getting late uh, on a Wednesday night, and you've all got to work tomorrow. Uh, no, you don't. Pour another drink. Have another puff, light a smoke, do whatever you need to, make a cup of tea. Um, we got a few more minutes of Ron left, and I'm really hoping that you guys are sharing some stories. When this is all done, I'm going to move from here over to there, and I'm going to take my phone off there, and I'm going to look at it, and I'm going to read all the posts and all that stuff, and I hope to uh, see some funny uh, Ron stories, or some sad, or some beautiful, or whatever. I just hope that you're all talking about Ron Hines, and um, for the friends of Ron and friends of mine, um, thanks for, for uh, being here to think of him on this night, and welcome to the uh, Canadian Songwriters Hall of Fame, Ron. I don't know when, the, I guess you already are, uh, I, or I'm not sure what happens now. Um, I guess the ECMAs uh, or somebody could release a, release a statement on what's going to happen with that, but your induction is to happen tomorrow night, um, so I don't know if it's still happening or if something's happening. Maybe somebody out there knows and they can tell us all. Uh, next week, by the way, I've got a new piece of equipment coming that's going to help me uh, use microphones to get the sound levels all nice and normal. I really like this simple vibe. I'm going to keep it pretty simple. I just want to kind of get things leveled and balanced out for you a little bit, so I'm looking forward to that. And um, I'm going to play you the last song on the record. Amelia Curran sang on the record with me on this one. She took a verse and we did it as a duet. And boy, oh boy, every time I play it, I want to hear her sing the second verse. I often mess up the beginning of the second verse because I'm waiting for her to come in. But... And the 
park and the cars and the pack in the bars and the dance in the St. John's the last song off the album. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, I can hear the applause from here. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So nice. Um, of course, when you do a record, there's certain songs that uh, you try that, that, that don't make it to the record. And uh, I recorded a few songs, a few of Ron's newer songs that uh, people hadn't heard. Uh, a song called Hero, which I recorded, which um, was really nice. But when I started getting into it, I remember Ron telling me uh, what that song was about. And it really hit me as not a song that anybody else can sing. Uh, and I, I learned a song called... Uh, uh, what was that song called? Uh, Leaving Home. Beautiful, beautiful piece. Oh, I might play that sometime next week. Um, learn Godspeed. I couldn't quite get it to sound right. I couldn't quite get my uh, emotions around that one. It was too... too uh, just too much of a moment in time. As was Dry. Dry was way too personal as well. Um, certain things you just can't tackle from some people, and those ones didn't, didn't, really, uh, didn't really do it. Um, but there was another song that I, I, I got, which I didn't put on the record, because Good Dog is Lost. This is a little bit of technical stuff for your guitar players out there. Um, Ron does this weird thing where he takes a chord and he walks the bass line, bass line around it, like a good dog is lost is... Um, So he's just kind of walking around the bass, and then he's got a song called Killer Cab, which I love, and I wanted it on the record too, but it's also, uh, it's very close, and on the record, uh, they just didn't, uh, they didn't, there was too much of this, of this very similar thing, even though the songs are very different. Um, but I'm going to end out with this song tonight, and again, thank you all for being here. Thanks for spending some time with me on a Wednesday night. I hope you're having a good time. Uh, Whiskey Wednesdays, I can't wait to get back to the pub and uh, see all my friends um, and get back out on the road and see all the people that, uh, you know, support me and come out to see me um, and, and keep me living and breathing music. And we're going to keep doing this as well. Um, Whiskey Wednesdays are nowhere, uh, nowhere near done and uh, the online thing I'm really enjoying. So um, thanks again and um, thanks to Ron's family and uh, friends and fans for um, embracing me and letting me do the Ron thing to uh, help uh, keep his memory alive, if maybe just for myself, but uh, either way. Uh, there's a big hole in my life and I love playing his music, so it's a really nice thing. Um, I'm gonna end a song with Killer Cab, which is, um, the reason that I, I love this song, if you ever take a taxi in Newfoundland, there's, there's, there's three parts to the ride. There's the beginning where the cab driver introduces himself, 
and the end where the cab driver introduces himself again or herself. Uh, and then there's the middle where they tell you a, a story about something topical. Um, and it's, um, it might be something that's not in the news, it might be just a local thing, but it's a, it's a really interesting experience. Um, I don't know if that's changed at all in the 20 years since I've taken a cab in Newfoundland. Actually, I've taken cabs back there since then, and it's the same thing. Newfoundlanders like to talk, um, and cab drivers are no exception to that rule. Uh, so this is Killer Cat. goes like this. I'm going to send this out to Dave McCrary at night up in Peterborough. Uh, he's the sound man at the Red Dog. He loves his song, so. Thank you very much. This was a really good night for me. Uh, I love spending time with Ron through his music still. It's, uh, it's my main connection to him outside of my memory. And uh, I, um, I, I, when I was looking through my messages today, um, a couple days before Ron died, he, uh, he sent me a text. Uh, I don't know, uh, I don't quite know what it was in response to. And it was a strange thing. 
and I'll always wonder about it, um, just out of the blue, a few days before he passed, while I was working on his, the art design for his record, his last record, and uh, I got a message that says, uh, thanks Ken, uh, dot dot dot, see you down the Lost Highway. And I always just thought that that was, uh, I don't know, what, Ron was weird, but I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe he knew his time was coming, and uh, it felt nice to get to, to know that that's the last uh, message that he sent me. See you down the Lost Highway, very Ron Hines. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much um, for uh, tuning in tonight, and thanks for supporting me on Whiskey Wednesdays by being here. And thanks to my girls for coming out, and thanks to everybody in Newfoundland who helped uh, Ron at some point in time when he needed help. So for now, we'll see you next Wednesday. I'm going to put this out. And... Uh, Cheers. Take care.